in the last video we have already discussed about the process of diffusion right in this video we will discuss about that how the diffusion is possible in solid liquid and gases next we will discuss that what is the fick's law of diffusion and at last we will see what are the different applications of fick's law right so how we define the process of diffusion we know that the spreading out and the mixing of a substance with another substance due to the motion of its particle is called diffusion right and the diffusion of one substance into another substance goes on until a uniform mixture is formed for example diffusion of bromine vapor in air or we can say that diffusion is the property of matter which is based on the motion of its particles right and diffusion occurs in gases liquids and solids and the rate of diffusion increases on increasing the temperature of the diffusing substances now how the diffusion is possible in solid liquid and gases if we talk about solids right we know that in solid the particles are very close to each other right but for diffusion to occur the particle must be able to move around but in solid the process of diffusion is possible only due to thermal agitation due to thermal agitation the particles only vibrate about its mean position it cannot move from one place to another so we can say that the process of diffusion in solid is slowest as compared to liquids and gases right if we talk about liquids right so diffusion is fast in liquids as compared to solids but slow as compared to gases for example if we put some drop of ink into the jar of a water right after some time we found that the drop of ink spread throughout the water which shows that how the diffusion is possible in liquids if we talk about gases so the process of diffusion in gases is fastest as compared to solids and liquids for example if we open the bottle of perfume into the air then within a few second we smell it which shows that how the diffusion is rapidly occurring gases because in gases the particles are very far away from each other so the process of diffusion in gases is fastest as compared to solids and liquids now let's see what are the basic difference in solid liquid and gases on the basis of different properties right so if we talk about the property like rigidity so in solid the solids are rigid because the particles are very close to each other if we talk about liquids so liquids are not rigid because the particles are close to each other but not very close to each other as compared to solids right if we talk about gases so gases are not rigid because the particles are very far away from each other if we talk about the property like shape and volume so the solids have definite shape and volume same reason because the particles are very close to each other if we talk about liquids so liquids have definite volume but no definite shape in case of gases so gases have neither definite shape nor definite volume if we talk about the property like fluidity right so the solids cannot flow if we talk about liquids so the liquids can flow from higher to a lower level in gases so gases can flow in all direction because the particles are far from from each other if we talk about the property like compressibility right the uh, so solids cannot be compressed appreciably if we talk about liquids so liquids can be easily compressed and in gases can be easily compressed if we talk about the property like intermolecular attraction so the solid have maximum intermolecular at attraction in liquids intermolecular attraction is less than solids and in gases so gases uh the intermolecular force of attraction in gases is least right if we talk about the property like storage so solid can be stored without a vessel in liquids liquid can not be stored without a vessel we know that and in gases gases can be stored in closed vessels only 
if we talk about the uh, property like diffusion so in solid the the process of diffusion is slow as we already discussed in the previous slide in liquid the process of uh, diffusion is fast as compared to solid but in gases the process of diffusion is very fast if we talk about the property like space between the particles so in solid the particles are very close to each other in liquid it is less closely packed and in gases least closely packed particles now let's see how we define diffusion coefficient and it is also known as mass diffusivity right so the diffusion coefficient is represented by capital d and it is also known as mass diffusivity right and how we define it actually it is a measurement of how quickly one material diffuses to another or we can say that the process of diffusion will be faster if the value of d means if the value of diffusion coefficient which is also known as mass diffusivity is higher so many equation like fick's first and second law include it it as a key variable uh, now this is the equation for fick's first law uh, which is represented by capital j equal to minus d dc by dx and capital d is the diffusion coefficient and c is the concentration x is the distance and j is a flux this equation is a fixed first law which indicates that if the flux and the change in the concentration over time are known then the value of d can be calculated and here the negative sign is used which indicates that the concentration gradient is negative but how we define the concentration gradient so the concentration gradient refers to the gradual change in the concentration of solutes right in this figure shows that the concentration gradient as the difference in the quantity of a substance between the two areas so the diffusion coefficient is the proportionality factor in fick's law and fick's law states that the mass of a substance diffusing in time over a surface normal to the diffusing direction is proportionate to its concentration gradient right and what is the unit of diffusion coefficient so the diffusion coefficient which is also known as mass diffusivity has a units of area per time represented by meter square per second in si unit and the term refers to the mass of a substance within a concentration gradient of unity diffuses through a unit surface in a unit of time how we define the rate of diffusion so the rate of diffusion which is also known as flux and represented by capital g is defined as the amount of a substance that will flow through a unit area during a unit time interval and the uh, rate of diffusion is represented by j and it is equivalent to flux and the unit is kg per meter square per into second now how we define fick's law of diffusion so the fick's law of diffusion explains the diffusion process uh, means you know movement of molecule from higher concentration to lower concentration region in 1855 adolf fick described the fick's law of diffusion a diffusion process that obeys fick's law is called normal diffusion or fickian diffusion right uh, a, a diffusion process that does not obey fick's law is known as anomalous diffusion or we can say that it is a non fickian diffusion and fick's law of diffusion is used to solve the diffusion coefficient represent, uh, represented by capital d and there are two laws that are interrelated fick's first law is used to derive fick's second law which is similar to the diffusion equation now according to fick's law of diffusion the molar flux due to diffusion is proportional to the concentration gradient and the rate of change of concentration of the solution at a point in space is proportional to the second derivative of concentration with space so the fick's first law is represented by this equation as we already discussed in the previous slide Uh, where j is the diffusion flux and capital d is the diffusivity and uh, you know phi is the concentration and x is the position now how we define the fick second law so we have already discussed about the fick first law 
and uh, you know a fixed first law is only for steady state right but in case of non steady state we are using the fixed second law so we know that uh, you know uh, fixed first law is uh, explained by this particular equation where j is equals to minus d dc upon dx and d is the diffusivity and its unit is centimeter square per second and the unit of j which is a flux uh, uh, its unit is number per centimeter square per second and the value of d is represented by this particular equation so fixed first law applies to steady state system where concentration keeps constant but in many cases of diffusion the concentration however changes with time how to describe the diffusion kinetic in this area so we are using fixed first second law so continue from the you know uh, last lecture we will learn how to deduce the fixed second law and understand the meaning when applied to some practical cases so this is the particular diagram which we are using to solve the diffusion fixed second law so we can define the local concentration and diffusion flux and at a position x and it presented by this particular equation and we take the concentration gradient between the two particular areas so it is represented by this equation and uh, we know that dc which is a function of x and t where x is the position and t is the time and upon t which is equal to minus dj upon dx or we can uh, you know re uh, replace the format del with d so this our equation is represented by this equation and from fixed first law uh, we you know deduce the second uh, fixed second equation like this uh, so this is the fixed second equation or we can say that it, uh, this is the fixed second law right uh, now let's see what are the different applications of fixed law right so uh, for liquids fixed law is uh, applicable for two miscible liquids when they are brought in contact and diffusion take place at a macroscopic level and fabrication of semiconductor diffusion equation from fixed law are used to fabricate integrated circuit and it is also useful for you know uh, pharma uh, pharmaceutical applications and uh, it is also useful for food industry so you know this is uh, something about fixed law of diffusion